a huge HCC in zero one is blocking peripheral bio duct branches. As well as in zero two, an enormous tumor is hindering peripheral outflow of bile. The double shot sign in 3A only seems to be like a segment 3 detention. It is, however, a well perfused peripheral branch of hepatic artery as a proof for liver cirrhosis. Arteria hepatica branches are to be seen in 0 4 together with distended interpretic bile duct branches. Figure 0 5 shows a rare reason of myobial distension and aneurysm of arteria hepatica. In six arteriosclerotic changes as a sort of normality is demonstrated. Note the marked co inflammatory edema in adjacent antrum and duodenal bulb in zero seven. Site palpation under control of clinical ultrasound was proving acute inflammation in zero eight. No clinical signs at all, on the other hand, were noted in 09. This again in figure 10 demonstrates the efficacy of clinical ultrasound. These changes in 11 were not of inflammatory origin, but attributable to the liver cirrhosis. Perforation was proven in operation of case 12 with a severe clinical feature. Whereas this perforation in 13 was with little symptoms only. This was true in case 14 also with a few clinical symptoms in an old man. And in case 15 too, the patient reported subjectively little pain only. In 16a, no complaints at all were noted. There was an elevated gamma GT only. Bubble information in 16b additionally was limited. This long standing hepatolysis in Caroli was asymptomatic as well in 17. These spectacular changes in 18 were mildly symptomatic as well, only note the spontaneous bubbles. Leading were in case 19 rather elevated enzymes than clinical complaints. This course was, however, severe in case 20 with heavy diffuse pains. Fever was the clinically leading symptom in these patients in 21 and 22, suffering both from biliary stones too, shown in bubbles in 22.
pus was extracted by interventional U.S. and sent to bacteriological analysis in case 23. A seemingly unperfused Vena porta is shown in CF in 24. And in the same case, with a more sensitive CF in 25, clearly is demonstrated a normal perfusion. In 26, a portal hypertension in the liver cirrhosis is demonstrated. Two different cases of small tumors of the head of the pancreas in figures 27 A and B are demonstrated. Note please the perfect matching of US and ERCP. A rare but severe complication of thermoablation is seen in the US without and with perfusion study in 20A and B respectively under live figure in 28C. Note the invasion of the skin by the liver tumor and necrotic areas of the latter. Very mildly symptomatic, HCC was the more serious finding in figure 29. Different cases of similarity again. The question remains in both case 30 and 31 whether growth of malignancies was from there to here, or vice versa. This malignancy in case 32 was asymptomatic as well. Laparoscopic cardiostectomy had been performed the day before in case 33. Patient one day after laparoscopic cardiostomy in 34 is doing well, obviously. These equipoise changes in 35 were caused by open cholecystectomy years ago. A typical case for ESWL in case 36 done successfully. In the two cases 37A and B, the so-called residual stones shortly after CE were subjected to SWL and a good fragmentation result with a spontaneous outflow was documented in both cases. And another case of successful ESWR is shown as well in 38. Note the different post-operative abscesses which are displayed in 39 to 30E. The variations in bursa minor and subhepatic abscesses are documented in 39A and B, respectively, as well as stenosis and minor echo poor collection in 39C. And please note in 39D an abscess mimicking gallbladder in spite of the foregoing cholecystectomy. Additional CT scanning and 39E is at least questionable, if not completely superfluous. Interventional 
clinical ultrasound revealed a post-operative bilioma in 40. Cases 41 to 43 show different types of post-operative biliary leakages after laparoscopic cholecystectomies. They all were symptomatic and they all could be handled conservatively so they did not need re-operation. These anastomoses were well visible in clinical ultrasound node erbilia and peristalsis in 44, proving absence of an outflow obstacle. And please note on the opposite mild but significant hindrance of biliary outflow in 45, and even suture eclipse in 46 are displayed which otherwise shows normal diameter of the DHC. Please note the detailed information given by clinical US information is gained by additional ERC examinations was very limited in 47 A and D and there was no need felt at all for additional CT scanning. Clearly, clinical and laboratory results were needed in each of the cases. Shortly after laparoscopic me, this bizarre complication in 48 needed EST. Two cases shortly as well after laparoscopic cholecystectomy. These cases 49 and 50 show a catastrophic result of the operative intervention. The false tubular structure had been clipped. In 41A and B, clipping was obviously done as well in a non-adequate way, leaving much of the gallbladder in C2. Anyhow, re-operation was not regarded as really necessary.